Hello everyone. I am Dr. Pooja Jhori, your biochemistry educator. Now today I am uh, I will be discussing a very important topic: electron transport chain. Uh, now see, all of you all must be preparing for your MCI exam, which is going to be held on the next Sunday. So uh, this will be a very helpful topic in uh, for preparation of that exam also. So what do you mean by the term electron transport chain? See, as it is clear from the word itself, there is transport of electrons via a chain. What are electrons? Electrons are negatively charged. So if we look at the chemistry aspect also, so these electrons actually combine with protons which are positively charged in the presence of oxygen to form water. And this is the basis of this electron transport chain. So today in this video, we will be discussing the inhibitors and couplers, uncouplers because most of the students I've seen, they get confused between inhibitors and uncouplers. Okay, so first of all, let me just give you a simplest definition of electron transport chain. It is the transport of electrons via a chain so that it combines with photons in the presence of oxygen to form metabolic water. Now see basically what is the importance of electron transport chain. So just let me just give you a brief you know summary of this. Now see we have carbohydrates We have proteins in our diet and we have fats in our diet. These are the three basic components which we have in our diet. So be it carbohydrates, be it proteins, be it fats, ultimately they are converted into acetyl coenzyme A because carbohydrates via glycolysis form pyruvic acid converted into acetyl CoA. Proteins we know, some of them are glucogenic, some of them are ketogenic. So glucogenic means somewhere related to glucose and ketogenic means acetyl coenzyme A, yeah, some keto derivatives. And fats we know, even chain fatty acid from acetyl coenzyme A. And this acetyl coenzyme A, which has two carbon atoms, it undergoes complete degradation via PCA cycle, giving one carbon here and one carbon. Right, and there are three dehydrogenases reactions also in which NADH plus H positive is given out. FAD is converted into HH2. Similarly, two more NADH plus H positive are given out. So, what is the fate of these protons? These are positively charged and these are not wasted. So, the the purpose of these protons is they via this electron transport chain will be combining with the electrons forming the water. And this water is not ordinary water. It is known as metabolic water. And the most interesting feature about this is Whatever amount of energy is given at every step of the transport of electrons, it is reserved in the form of ATP. Or it is dissipated in the form of heat. So this is what is electron transport chain. And synthesis of ATP is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative means in the presence of oxygen and phosphorylation is attachment of phosphate. So this EPC plus OP will be equivalent to biological oxidation. So if you guys want to, you know, uh, study more about how carbohydrates are converted to pyruvic acid and style coe, you can refer to my videos on carbohydrate metabolism. And if you guys want to study in detail biological oxidation, obviously you can 
switch over to my videos. But in this video today, I will be mainly concentrating on electron transport chain and the inhibitors and couplers which are related to ETC and oxidative phosphorylation, right? So first of all, before starting up with any of the process in biochemistry, you should know what is the site, where it occurs. So always remember electron transport chain occurs around the inner mitochondria and PCA cycle occurs in the matrix of mitochondria. So basically, what I'm trying to tell you here is whatever dehydrogenation reactions are taking place, they will be, yeah, you can say wherever protons are given out, they will be transferred via this electron transport chain. Right. So this electron transport chain consists of major four complexes. Okay. First complex is LDF coenzyme Q reductase. Complex 2 is Now you see in both the complexes, one thing is common, which is coenzyme. Again, this was the question which was asked in FFT exam also. Coenzyme Q, as the name says, it is ubiquitin. Or it is actually also known as ubiquinol. So basically, complex 1 is handing over its electrons to coenzyme Q. Similarly, complex 2 is handing over the electrons to coenzyme Q. So ultimately, coenzyme Q is the major acceptor from complex 1 from complex 2. Complex 1 is NADH coenzyme Q reductase and complex 2 is FADH coenzyme Q reductase. Up, one thing you have to remember in this, that this complex 2 has a very low redox potential. Its redox potential is not so low that it doesn't generate nahi karta hai proton motive cells. Means, always remember one thing. This is again a very important question. Succinate dehydrogenase enzyme is the only enzyme of PCA which is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane because it has lower redox potential. It will never contribute to the proton motive force. And just because of this reason, one molecule of FED always gives one molecule of ATP lesser than what NAD gives. Okay, as you can see that, one molecule of NAD is giving 2.5 ATP, whereas one molecule of FED is giving 1.5. Okay, so this is complex one, this is complex two. Then this coenzyme two, Q, which is the isolated of one and two, handovers to complex three, which is cyclochrome C1, C3 oxidase. And then comes complex four. This is transported via cytochrome B, and this is cytochrome A1, A3 oxidase, right? So these are the basic components of electron transport chain. But basically, this video I have made just to, you know, make you people understand that what is the difference between electrons and electrons. We are not going to take all these complexes in detail, okay? So I'll just give you a list of the inhibitors complex wise. I'm now see as you can see this is complex one. And the inhibitors are because these are the most frequently asked questions in the exam. You can say amobarbital is there, rotinone, fish poison, pyrcidine A, and guanitidine. These are the inhibitors. of complex one, site-specific inhibitors, means inhibitors which are blocking at a particular site. Second one is complex two. The most important inhibitors are melonic acid, carboxyl, and PTFA. 
these are the three important inhibitors of complex 2 then we come over to complex 3 complex 3 antimycin is there then this Bal is there, British anti leucide, and all the hypoglycemic drugs like metformin and all. They will block complex 3 of PEC. Complex 3. And last but not the least, complex 4. Complex 4 is inhibited by cyanide, a very important question. Carbon monoxide, again, a very important question hydrogen sulfide and sodium azide. Okay, so these are the important inhibitors of the four major complexes of EPC. I'll just repeat it again. Complex 1, amobarbitol, rotenone, tiercidine and guanicidine. Complex 2, melonate, TTFA and toxin. Complex 3, antimycin, bar, hypoglycemic drugs and complex 4, cyanide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, and sodium oxide. Correct? So these are the inhibitors. Then comes inhibitors of OP. OP stands for oxidative phosphorylation, which is actually, you know, the complex 5 phosphorylation. This is complex 5 where ATP is synthesized. So inhibitors of ETC and OP are different. Again, I will repeat it. Inhibitor of ETC and OP will be different. Uncouplers will take after this. So this is again a very important question. The inhibitor of complex 5 is polyvomycin. Okay. And then what is its function? It will inhibit both oxidation and phosphorylation. That is why it is an inhibitor of oxidative phosphorylation. Then another inhibitor is acetylocyde, which is the inhibitor of ADP-ATP translocase. So these are the two very, very important inhibitors of oxidative phosphorylation. Then we come over to uncouplers. Now see, electron transport chain is actually, I am just to make it clear, complex one, two, coenzyme Q, three, four, water. Okay. So whatever energy is given out at every step, this energy is taken over by complex 5 to synthesize AK. So I can say that electron transport chain is coupled with ATP. Whatever amount of energy is given out, it will be utilized to form ATP in the end. So the uncoupler is a molecule which will uncouple the two molecules. Yeah, uncouple the two processes. It means that if uncouple, it will uncouple or it won't let the synthesis of ATP to occur. ETC plus OP will be actually broken. This is what is the function of an Now you understood what is the difference between inhibitors and uncouplers. Inhibitors are always blocking a particular complex, whereas uncoupler is the one which is uncoupling the two processes. So oligomycin and tetrachylocyte will be the inhibitors of oxidative phosphorylation, but uncouplers will be altogether different. The example of uncouplers. 2,4 dihydroxyphenol, a more frequently asked question. Then 2,4 dinitroprisol along with 2CP and CCP. Similarly, valinomycin is also an uncoupler, and high dose of aspirin also leads to uncoupling the two.
process. Is it clear? So this is all about, this is a very small video just to give you a brief overlay of inhibitors and unblockers because this is a very important topic which on which most of the questions have been asked. So I guess all of you must have understood this topic. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for carefully listening to my lecture. Thank you so much. All the best for your upcoming exam.